generative AI is a very big thing for programmers now because generative AI can code pretty well. For example, I've been able to automate some of my work using Python. And even if I don't know how to program Python myself, I just tell Claude, which is the AI that I use, to, to code a script for me to process some files, combine PDFs or something like that. And it just does it for me and I can run it. And it works most of the time right away. And if it doesn't work, I can just tell what the error message is and then Claude will, Claude will fix it for me. The other day I started thinking about using generative AI in data analysis. And I know that you can integrate generative AI with RStudio and you can subscribe to, uh, to Copilot. And when I enable GitHub Copilot, then this is like the tool that professional programmers use to code. The problem with this service is that it has a monthly fee. It's uh, maybe 20, 30 euros, something like that. It's not a lot, but if you think about over the year, it adds up. And most of my work is not R programming. So I use R every now and then. So this is not really a justifiable option for me. So I need to look at some other ways how I can use Jerry AI with R. And there is this really nice package called uh, GPT Studio. And what this package allows you to do is that you uh, subscribe to one of these AI tools. This tool offer uh, supports most of them and uh, you get that what they call an API key. And, and with the API key, you can access the programming interface of the software. And then this allows you to use the software here within RStudio. So this is how the GPT Studio works. We load the library and then we can just go to add-ins and now there is our GPT Studio and it can do four things for us. We can check, do spelling check, and then we can comment our own code. This is very useful. Uh, then we can chat and we can chat within the code. So let's open the chat. And it opens a connection to Claude because Claude is the AI that I use for R. And we can ask it, who are you? And it tells us that it's Claude because that's the AI that we're using here. If you want to use other models, you click here. And this is where you configure the, uh, which model are you, you're using. So API service, I'm using Anthropic, which is the product of Claude, but there are in many other uh, providers here. The default is uh, OpenAI, which provides a GPT model. And, uh, but when you, uh, you can use whatever, whichever you like the most. And some of these uh, can be run locally, but Claude is run on the cloud. So what, what use would this be? We can, for example, ask it to provide us an example of how you would, we do graphics in R. So give me an example of how to do, do graphics using ggplot2. And it's thinking, and then it prints the answer after it Producing. The problem here is that, uh, or one of the downsides is that it, it doesn't really write it as it generates. So it, it waits for the full thing to be generated. And then uh, after that, you can you only get the answer. So it's, it doesn't work the same way like this web inter interface it would work, where you just uh, get the answer as it's generated. So this is uh, the code. And we can just uh, copy all this stuff and then run it. So we can copy it here and then we run, we take a new R file, we put it here and then uh, we can do a plot and then we can run it. And it does the plot for us. Okay, so this is uh, uh, some kind of integration. So we have the viewer here. So it's just like you would be using Claude or ChatGPT, but instead of using it in a browser, you use, use it in R Studio. But what you can also do is to uh, work on the code. So uh, we can do here, we can add this. This is the same plot with uh, more bling. And then we highlight it and we're going to send this to Claude and then it's going to answer us 
right after the, uh, the comment. So we're going to do here add-ins and uh, chat in source. And then it uh, processes. There's no progress indicator. And then it does the uh, same code with, with more bling, like enhanced plot. So you can also do uh, do something simple like uh, you can do a comment, generate x as as random normal variable. So you can code uh, write your intent what you want to do in a comment, and then we highlight, and then we do our uh, uh, chat in source, and then it does it for us. So. Uh, this is uh, very useful because now, now you can just think what you would do and, and write it in a comment and then ask Claude to write R code for you. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's ask, give me an example of regression diagnostics. This is the most annoying part, just waiting for it to answer. Okay, so it gave us something and uh, we have to copy this. And then uh, we do copy and then uh, copy. So one downside is that you have to copy each part of this code manually. So it doesn't really write directly to the, uh, the, the file like Copilot would, but this is a lot less expensive than Copilot. So we have here, and then we do and additional blocks. So there's lots of stuff here. Let, let's just do it all. And we copy it here. We could, of course, ask it to provide everything in, in a single code block, but that was, that was easy enough. We run it. And uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, do multicollinearity because we have only one explanatory variable. We could give this uh, error to Claude and then uh, it fixes it for us. Give me a single code block that I can copy. And then it gives us a single code block, which we can just copy to the R file and then uh, then run it. So this is the uh, the full block, and it also told us why there was an error. So let's copy all that and put it here, and then we can run it, and it does it. Okay. So this is the uh, the chat and chatting code. And here we have the same code without comments. So I'm going to copy it and paste it here. So there's no comments and we can save it. Then we can add GPT or GPT Studio, which in this case calls Claude, to comment our code. So commenting our analysis code is something that you should really do. And in most of my analysis files, there, there's like twice as much comments as there are actually comma, actual commands. So if I have 10 lines of commands, then I might have 20 lines of comments. The comments tell uh, what is the purpose of my code. And for example, which paper it's for, uh, it might include excerpts from the results and so on. If you don't like writing comments, uh, this is one way to uh, to comment your code. So you can just add a, ask the AI to comment your code. And it might be a good idea to do that anyway, because sometimes we, the AI will notice something that uh, should be commented, which we have forgotten to do. So these are the three functions that I've used. Uh, chatting here, uh, commenting your existing code, and then chatting in code. You can just like uh, tell it, for example, uh, tell me a joke as an R comment. And we do add-ins. There's a keyboard shortcut for this. And then we do our 
chatting source. So that tells us a joke. So you saw that the R Studio approach and the GPT Studio package is one way of using generative AI to do R. And uh, the copilot, which you have to pay for, is another. But those are not the only ways. There are also other ways of using R. So you don't have to use R Studio. For some students, uh, R St they think that R Studio and R are the same. But R is just like the thing that produces, that takes text in and produces text output. And then the graphical user interface that you see is just the editor. So the editor is R Studio, and then you have R running within R Studio. But you can also run R within other editors. And I have here uh, the Microsoft uh, Visual Studio code. So this is programmer's editor. And I have installed the R add-ons here. So this is uh, like R Studio. And I can just do R with this. So I can do file. And then I can do new, uh, new file. And then it, I'll pick R. And then I'll do print hello. And then I, then I can run it from here. It's going to run. So this is my R. And uh, it works the same as R Studio. So you have the, uh, the file here. You have the output here, the console. And then you have the workspace here. So it's pretty similar to R Studio. You can also do graphics. But the advantage of using a programmer's editor is that these programmer's editors have lots and lots of different features that R Studio doesn't have. Because this is a, a very general editor. There are lots of add-ons. And one particular useful add-on is, is Klein. And this is a, an add-on for using generative AI within a Visual Studio code. We can just tell it to do stuff. And uh, we can say that uh, give me an example of regression diagnostics with R. And then it asks, uh, it connects to Claude and it shows side by side, like this is an empty file that we had. And it shows what it would change. So it's an empty file. So there's uh, an it asks us if we want to save this, and we're going to save it. So save. And this is our example, and uh, looks pretty good. So we can run it, and it probably generates some graphics. We can see some graphics here, like you would see in R Studio. And uh, yeah, so there's an error. And uh, then we can tell Klein that, or Claude, that we have this error. And then it tells us that it'll, it'll fix the error. It shows the, uh, the old code, code and the new code side by side. And because this is, uh, a, this is very privacy conscious piece of software. So whenever we read something from the, uh, from the disk or save something to the disk, we have to approve it. So we're going to approve that it reads the file and then it runs, say, sends the, uh, the file to Claude. And this is the original file. And this is the file that it's changing. So uh, you can see uh, the output real time when Claude is coding something for us. OK, so it fixed it by, by saying that vari variance inflation factor is not applicable to regressions with just one predictor. Uh, I would have expected it to fix it by, by saying that, uh, by adding more predictors. But we can add, uh, we can save, and then we can say uh, add one more predictor to the example. So VIF can be calculated. And it, uh, we approve reading. And what I like particularly is that it tells here what it's doing. And uh, I'm paying for each request to Claude. And here's the, the cost. So asking it to do something typically costs like maybe 10 cents for one, one uh, R file and like one, one session of back and forth. You can think of think about whether that's worth the money. And I've used uh, Claude for the API for two months now for various tasks. And I've paid 20 euros altogether. And it has probably saved me at least a week of work. So I paid 20 euros for a week of work. 
I think it's a pretty good deal. So, and it tells you uh, the cost, and then you know, like, okay, so uh, should I should I do something or not? If it starts to cost many euros, then you can start thinking how much time would it take for me to do this manually. All right, all right. So we're going to save it, and now we have different predictors, and we can have various inflation factor here, and then we can run it and see what it does. So where the various inflation factors here, so it allowed us to do it. Let's do another example. So let's close this and um, let's think about a course assignment. So I have a, a course assignment that where the students need to do a Monte Carlo simulation to demonstrate assumptions of techniques and what happens when they fail. So we can do a, a write, write me an R file that uh, demonstrates the small sample bias of two states least squares. And it does it. And it tells that it uses the AER, which is a package that has uh, tools for econometrics. It contains uh, two, uh, instrument variable regression to state least squares. And uh, it gives us this code that presumably does some kind of simulations and uh, then visualizes the results. So, so this is a seed for reproducibility and uh, then generating data, estimating models. It needs to estimate two models. Typically, if we want to demonstrate bias of two states least squares, we would show uh, all the least squares as, as just like for comparison. So this is what I would do. And then our sample sizes, if you want to demonstrate small sample bias, it's a very good idea to, to run it uh, over multiple sample sizes. And uh, then uh, we would typically show the results as some kind of plot. And we use this, use this ggplot here. So um, I'm going to uncomment the, the saving the plot because I just want to have the plots on console. So on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the viewer here. So let's see how it works. And uh, it's probably running the simulation now because it takes a little while. So if you are, uh, okay, it didn't work. And uh, it, the last time I tried it, it worked really well. So this is kind of like hit and miss. It produces as code that is mostly correct most of the time. We'll just uh, ask it to fix it for us. And let's run it. And we don't have pivot longer. And we should just uh, load the, the full tidyverse because it contains the pivot. And then uh, let's let's do uh, a smaller number of simulations to see replications just verify the code works. And uh, now we do the full. So you can see that with little uh, fixes, it can easily produce a uh, working code for us. And let's see what the simulation looks like. OLS estimates it incorrectly because uh, there is endogeneity. V is the, uh, the unobserved term. So, uh, and here we have the small sample bias of two states least squares. So it shows us that when have endogeneity, then uh, OLS is biased, two states least squares is unbiased uh, in large samples, or it's consistent, but then in small samples, there's bias. So in just a few minutes, I was able to, uh, to get a simulation study that demonstrates the effect of endogeneity on OLS, that's a byproduct. I wasn't asking for that, but it just happened to do that for us. And then the small sample bias of two states least squares. So this is a very useful thing. And if we uh, want to do this, uh, the same thing in Stata, like if I were to teach a class, then I can just tell it to uh, uh, convert the R file into Stata. 
and then it, it does conversions between different statistical software. It can also do translations. For example, I work mostly in the English language, but sometimes I need to present something in Finnish, and it's a big pain to translate all my, my figures and all my, my comments in my R or Stata code. But this will do translation from one language to another, and it just because it just changes the labels and it changes the comments and changes the variable names, the code will simply work if it worked originally. And this is the same thing, th same thing with uh, with Stata, and uh, it looks looks good. Uh, I will not run it, but yeah. So this is uh, a very useful tool, whether you use Stata or R or something else. This is a fresh install of Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look at how we set up everything that I just demonstrated from this point. So it first asks us to pick our theme. I like the light. And then uh, we need to start installing extensions. So extensions are installed here. And uh, the first thing that we need is to have an extension for generative AI. And we can search for that by searching, for example, Claude, which is the AI that I use. And it gives us Klein. So this is the coding agent that I just demonstrated. So we'll install it. I'm using this. I'm doing this on a Mac, but the process for doing this on Windows is exactly the same. So we're going to install it here. And then we go to the Klein here. And it asks us what is our provider. So our provider is, is Anthropic. And then we need to create an API key. You can create an API key for free. So Claude allows you to some use it for free for a little while, and then uh, you have to pay for it. So I'm paying for it, and I paid maybe 20 euros for two months, and I've been using it quite a lot. So we're going to create a key. And now, before you think about pausing the video and copying my key, I'm using, I'm deleting this demo key right after I record this video, so you will not be able to use this key. So we're going to add it to the default workspace and copy the key from here. And then we put it here and then uh, let's go. And we can ask, uh, does it work? So for example, uh, let's say, let's ask, who are you? And we can see that the API works. And uh, it costs us two cents to do this query. The reason is, that it uh, probably sent quite a lot of uh, instructions on what kind of response to provide if we do coding. And then, so we're now set up with uh, generative AI. And this is useful because if some setup of some other software fails, we can give the error message to Klein and then Klein can help us through the process. After we have set up the Klein assistant, the next thing that we need to do is to install the R packages or extensions for Visual Studio Code. And this is an officially supported configuration. So there's lots of documentation on, on, on the Visual Studio website. And we have R in Visual Studio Code and you just follow the instructions. I'll do it here so you can follow along. The process for installing this on a PC or a Windows computer is very similar to install it on a Mac. So what we start first is that we have R. OK, we need to install the language server for R. So I have that already installed. So we will install the language server. The language server does is that it allows us to do autocompletion. And it installed it up for us. OK, so let's put that away. Then we need to install R extension for Visual Studio Code. So we go to extensions. We search for R. And it gives us the R extension. You might also consider installing the R debugger if you want to use Visual Studio Code for troubleshooting R. So this is going to be useful. I will not go through using debugger in this video. I'll just show you how to use, how to use generate AI. Then we need to have uh, a couple of other packages. So uh, Radian is a package that's like an alternative uh, First, our console. So that allows us to do syntax highlighting. And um, HTTPGDPD, so that is a uh, graphics device using uh, HTTP. So you don't need to have 
X Windows system installed on Mac. So we go to Mac OS and uh, we have Markdown because that comes from with our studio. And then we need to have uh, Python installed. So uh, it probably is installed on most computers. I will need to start a new console or I can just do terminal. Then in the terminal, uh, we have PIP3, so that's for Python 3. And we do, you can just copy paste it here. So PIP3, because we're using Python 3 and that's the name of my package manager in Python. So it installed it. And then uh, we need to update the, uh, the settings in Visual Studio Code. So we go to the settings and uh, we go to code settings and settings. So it's command and, and period. I'll be using that uh, quite a lot. It's under extensions and R and we pick bracketed space. So that is the bracketed space. And then we have to pick the R terminal Mac and uh, let's see where it's located. R path for Mac and we need to make sure that the radian that we have is where's the location. So we do widths radian and it's under uh, Python. So the installation uh, differs a bit depending on where you installed your your Python and make sure not to set the R path. So I spent like 10 minutes uh, trying to figure out why R didn't work when I put the R terminal here. So you put the R terminal here. So make sure to follow this very precisely. Then we install HTPD in R. So I'm still using R Studio. And then we can search for that in, in the settings. And we, we pick that one. If you don't enable this, then uh, you will get all the graphics as a separate window using the X11 window system, which is not what most people would like. So at least I want to have them inside the Visual Studio Code. So that's the graphics. Then uh, we close the settings and now we can open R and we can do our common palette and then create our terminal. And that gives us a radiant terminal. So this is, uh, we can see colors and other nice things here in this terminal. Okay, and then we have uh, plotting. So we can try uh, a plot and that gives us plots. So now we see that see the graphics work and then also the terminal works. I highly recommend that you read the documentation, like all the features, because there's a lot of features. But we can do R now, and then we can do, uh, for example, file, a new text file. And then we select language, do we do R? And let's, and then we can ask Klein to give us an example. So give us an example of regression with R visualize the result with ggplot2. Yeah, so we should have started a new task instead of uh, continuing the old task. So we're going to save that and then it, it does uh, uh, a plot for us. We want to have it shown instead of saved print the plot. So it was saving it to the file, but we, we print the plot and then it shows us the plot. So now we have everything set up uh, for using R within Visual Studio Code with AI Assistant.